why I think we need to have the courage to set priorities. We need to ask ourselves if we want to make a better world, where would our money go to do the most good first? That's what we've asked some of the world's top economists, including five Nobel laureates, in something we call the Copenhagen Consensus. Uh, we brought those two uh, uh, experts together in 2004 and again in 2008, and we we're going to redo this again in 2012. Basically, we asked them, if you only had a limited amount of money, where would you get the most bang for the buck, as the Americans like to call it? Where would you get the most return for every I? I can't say that. What is it? Yeah, well, I'm sorry. You know what I'm trying to say, but I'm not, I'm not going to try to do that again. Anyway, so where do you do the most good for each currency unit spent? Uh, and what they found was that if they look across all the different problems in the world, all the great solutions, these were the top priorities. They found that for every dollar, for every euro, for every currency spent, you do the most good here. And micronutrients, free trade, and immunization, and agricultural research and development. I would argue that those four issues are typically issues that we don't hear very much about. They're not sexy, if you will. They're incredibly important, but we don't hear very much about them, often because there's not very strong interest groups backing them. Take micronutrients. Most of you might not even know what it is, and certainly it's not something we think about. But the fact is that most people in this world don't suffer from malnutrition in the sense that they don't have enough calories. They suffer from malnutrition in the sense that they don't have enough micronutrients. They essentially don't have vitamin pills. We're estimating that almost half of the world's population, about three billion people, lack one or more micronutrients. Take iron, for instance. Iron uh, deficiency afflicts about two billion people in this world. On average, it's estimated that those two billion people, because they don't have enough iron, they are about 17% less strong than they could otherwise have been physically, and they lose about eight IQ points in their development. So basically, we have a third of the world's population being less strong and less smart than they could otherwise have been.